If you've never had a freshly baked Ben Usha for breakfast, you're seriously missing out. I'm the opposite of a morning person, and yet for these bad boys, I'll drive one and a half hours at the crack of dawn to our favorite bakery. They're these soft and fluffy flatbreads that are covered in delicious toppings like meat and cheese. But while that sounds quite basic, cooking toppings on fresh dough is nothing short of magic. It makes the bread absorb the flavor of what it's topped with, giving you the perfect hybrid of a pita bread and a pizza. Luckily for you, we've figured out the perfect dough and all the traditional toppings so you can make them at home. And no matter how you cook them, these manaish are gonna change breakfast forever. To get started, you'll make a supple and versatile manusha dough that is the bread part of the flatbread. Unlike pizza, there is no barrier between the dough and toppings on manaish. So as the dough cooks, it will absorb the flavor of whatever it's topped with. This dough is fairly quick to make and can even be turned into a bread. So it's perfect for a weekend breakfast. Begin by blooming a little yeast. Measure 250 grams of water into a jug or bowl, and yeast works best in warm water, so heat the water until it measures around 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. Once it's warm, add 8 grams of dried active yeast, and then to feed it, add in 20 grams of sugar. Give those a quick mix to dissolve, and that should bring your yeast back to life. Cover the yeasty liquid, then set it aside for 15 minutes, during which the yeast will feed on the sugar, creating loads of foamy bubbles. That's a good sign that it's alive. We need this yeast to give the dough a soft and springy texture that results in the most craveable manushas, so making sure your yeast is alive is really important. If no foam has developed, then your yeast has probably expired and you need to buy a new batch. Now once the yeast is bloomed, grab your stand mixer to make the dough. If you don't have one, you can knead the dough by hand instead. Using the dough hook, add 500 grams of all-purpose flour into the bowl of the stand mixer. More specifically, this flour is about 11% protein. Now add 6 grams of salt, then turn the mixer on low to combine. After a few seconds, add the yeasty water and then let the mixer run for about three minutes until all the flour has come together into a rough and sticky dough like this. Now, we're gonna add some fat to stop the dough from overdeveloping gluten. Turn the mixer on low, then slowly stream in 30 grams of vegetable oil. The dough will be sliding all over the place at first, but after three to four minutes, it should turn back into a rough dough. And when it does, turn the speed up to medium. Let it knead for about three to four minutes until it turns to a homogenous ball. Then check the texture of the dough. If it's rough and touching it covers your hands in sticky dough, then it needs a couple more minutes of kneading. It's done when it has a pretty smooth texture that doesn't leave any dough on your fingers. Now it needs a good rest before we can use it so the gluten can relax. Form the dough into a ball in your hands, then add a little oil to the bowl before adding the dough back in. Give it a little swirl so it doesn't stick to the bowl, then cover it with a cloth or plate and set it aside for 30 minutes. While it's resting, use that time strategically to prep the toppings. But before you do that, it's worth figuring out how you'll cook the manaish. You can cook these in a pan if that's all you have, but you'll get much better results baking them in an oven. If you've got a pizza stone or steel, use that as well to give the dough a way better cook than you'd get on an oven tray. Add your stone, steel, or oven tray before turning it on, then set your oven to 275 degrees Celsius or as close as you can get, and leave it to preheat for at least half an hour. The same applies if you've got a pizza oven, but preheat it according to its instructions. We'll get back to the cooking later, but in the meantime, let's tackle the toppings. In theory, you can top your manaish with anything that tastes good or bake them plain and use them as bread, but I think you should try the classic toppings first. The most basic and favorite topping of all time is a plain cheese manusha. It's usually made with a stretchy salty cheese called akewi that's similar to halloumi, but if you can't find it, you can get the same stretchiness and flavor by using fresh low moisture cooking mozzarella. Pre-shredded mozzarella might work in a pinch, but fresh mozzarella is way too wet for this. Simply shred the cheese to a large size, and if it's mozzarella, add a pinch of salt and mix it together well. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can create a custom blend by adding your favorite ingredients. I personally love the Syrian herby cheese star manusha, which adds chopped parsley, some nigella seeds, and a little dried mint to create a fresh and herby blend that is super craveable. The next most common topping is lahmajin, and this is a blend of spiced meat and vegetables. It's spread thin and baked onto manaish, and it results in a breakfast pastry that is deliciously meaty, while still being nice and light. Grab a mini food processor or blender, then roughly chop and add 125 grams of onion. Slice 175 grams of tomatoes into chunks and add those too. Then pulse those together thoroughly until you have a very finely chopped mixture. That's gonna contain a lot of extra moisture which can make the manaish soggy, so get rid of it. Use a strainer to drain off the excess liquid so it's still moist but not soaking wet, and you're left with a chunky moist paste that holds together. 
Now take 250 grams of minced lamb or beef with 20% fat and add it to a mixing bowl. Add the finely chopped vegetables and 30 grams of tomato paste. Then to flavor, season with one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of paprika, half a teaspoon of sumac, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. The last ingredient is two teaspoons of pomegranate molasses, which will give the meat a slight sweetness and tang. Now you mix it all together well until it turns homogenous. It should be pretty soft and malleable so we can easily spread it onto the dough. Set it aside to rest for about 10 minutes before you use it so it firms up. And now let's make the final topping. This is a za'atar man'usha, and to make the topping, you simply combine equal weights of za'atar and extra virgin olive oil into a thick paste like this. It's perfect for spreading on the dough and it won't leak when it's baked. All right, the dough should be ready by now, and so you can get right to work portioning it out and rolling it. It will have risen quite a bit, so grab the bowl and punch the dough down to deflate it. Flour your worktop, then place the dough on it and knock out even more gas. Now we'll portion it to however many pieces we want. I like the men at each to be about 8 inches in size and this dough recipe is enough to make 8 portions. These dough balls should weigh about 100 grams each, though you don't really need to be accurate. After portioning them, form each piece into a smooth dough ball, then set it aside. When your oven is fully preheated, you can start rolling out and cooking the men at each one at a time. Lightly flour the work surface, then grab a rolling pin and roll the dough out into an 8 inch or 20 centimeter circle. Don't do this ahead of time, otherwise they'll fill back up with gas and then puff up like a balloon in the oven. Prep a pizza peel by dusting it with some flour, add a rolled out piece of dough and then use your fingers to poke it full of dents. This process is called docking and it prevents massive air bubbles from forming while the dough is baking. You need to be pretty thorough with this, so if you plan on making these often, I recommend you grab a spiky dough docker thing from Amazon. Once it's nice and dented, give the peel a quick shake to make sure the dough hasn't stuck, and now you can top it. The process is the same for all the toppings. Just add some to the middle of the dough, then spread it out into a thin even layer with the back of a spoon. Coat the dough pretty much all the way around, but leave a small edge. You need to cook it immediately before the dough has time to rise. Now, if you're making lahmagin ones, spread the meat out to a layer thin enough to cook by the time the dough is done cooking. And when you're assembling cheese ones, don't add too much cheese, otherwise it can fall off when you're shimmying it off your peel. Now that you know the basics, try upgrading your mentosha by filling half of it with your favorite topping and the other half with cheese. Now, let's figure out how to cook these. Head over to your preheated oven and shimmy the dough off the peel right into the center of the stone. Close the oven and let it cook for two and a half to three minutes. Then it's ready to come out when the dough is browned around the edges. For the lahmagin ones, the meat should be dried and fully cooked. And if you're making za'atar ones, they need to cook for about 20 seconds less than the others. If you're cooking these on a piece of stone or steel, the bottom of the menu should develop some nice leoparding. This one looks perfect. And if you're not gonna eat them right away, fold them in half so the toppings stay warm. Now, if you don't have a pizza peel and you wanna make these, here's how. Place the rolled out dough on a sheet of baking paper and thoroughly dock it. Then move it to one corner and tear off the excess. Now you can top it like usual. And when it's ready, you just lift it with the baking paper and transfer it to the middle of your oven and cook as usual. Because the dough isn't directly touching the pizza stone or tray, the bottom won't brown as well, which is the main downside of using the paper. Instead, you can try cooking the men at each without an oven altogether. Preheat a stainless steel or cast iron pan on high heat, then add in a rolled and docked piece of dough. Cook it for about 60 seconds on the first side, then when it has firmed up and browned a little, flip it over. You can now top it with whatever toppings you like, such as a good amount of cheese, then cover it with a lid and let it steam for 3 minutes until cooked through. This technique works pretty well, though if you're making 8 men at each, you might find it a bit too slow for your liking. The result is really nice though, I did slightly over crisp it, but it has browned nicely and so it's definitely worth trying if this is your only option. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a pizza oven, you're in for a treat because it will give the men at each a slight char that makes them taste even better while still giving you a soft textured dough. We've barely had the space to use our uni for a few years, but now that we've got a back garden, we're gonna put it to work and bring you plenty of Middle Eastern bakes. Uni wanted to help when they found out and so they sent us their stainless steel foldable table to get us going again. This thing is perfect for our small garden space and is designed to make pizza baking a joy. And what a joy it was to eat from again. After preheating the oven on high for 20 minutes, it is pretty effortless to bake the manaish. Add one to the center of the oven and cook for about one minute and 40 seconds in total. Once the dough has set, start rotating it every 20 seconds so the dough browns evenly. Pull the manusha out once it is fully browned and has a tiny amount of char like this. It's practically impossible to get the same result in a home oven. The soft and pliable texture combined with a slight char of this pizza oven manaish is truly unbeatable and exactly like what you get at the best bakeries. 
Despite how good all those mana each are, there's one more that is so good, I think it is one of the world's best sandwiches. This is called a Labna Man Usha, and the difference here is that you cook the dough completely plain without any toppings. Give it an extra thorough docking and then bake it for about two minutes in the oven. Remove when it is ever so lightly browned on top so it's still soft and pliable. Once it has cooled, spread a thick layer of labna or cream cheese all over the surface. You then top it with thin slices of cucumber and tomato and some olive pieces as well. But what makes this sandwich so good is fresh mint. Add a few leaves, then drizzle it with some good extra virgin olive oil. Finally grind on a little salt and pepper, then wrap it up and you can dig into this fantastic sandwich. I'll leave you with one final tip for the mana each. These freeze and reheat insanely well. So if you're looking for a mega head breakfast, these should be top of your list. I've been so excited to dig into these and look how soft they are. I've reheated them in the microwave. That is just incredible. That is what you want from a good mental shirt. Let's give them a try. Mm. This might just be plain old mozzarella, but there's something about baking it in this bread that just takes it tastes amazing. This is perfect. Time to give the meat a try. Mm. Usually not a big fan of the meat ones, but this one, wow really good. So it's got a slight amount of sweetness from the pomegranate molasses and the onions and it's a perfect bite. And finally we have the Lebanon sandwich. That has got to be one of the greatest sandwiches on earth. It's so simple and yet the combination of flavors it is on point. You don't get sandwiches much better than this. If you haven't tried this sandwich give it a try. This is something I could eat every single day of the week.